How's it going guys, Jake here, and today I'm doing part 4 of the Industrial Craft 2 Mod Review Series. And as you can see behind me, we're going over some nuclear reactors. So, let's jump right in. So the first just I want to go over are some heat components. Now, when you use these reactors, they'll produce an extensive amount of heat when producing this energy. And if you don't control that, then some pretty nasty effects can happen to the surrounding environment. So starting up here, we have the heat vent. Now to make this, just 4 iron bars, 4 iron plates, and electric motor. The advanced heat vent, which is 6 iron bars, 2 heat vents and a diamond. We have the reactor heat vent which is eight copper plates and a normal heat vent. So this basic heat vent right here removes six heat from itself every second and this is more an advanced version so it removes 12 heat from itself every second. Now the reactor heat vent removes five heat from the re reactor and five heat from itself every second. And now the reason why this is important is because the reactor cannot be cooled other than these types of vents. There are only a handful of things that actually cool down the reactor and if the reactor gets too hot that's where those disastrous effects can take place. And the overclocked heat vent, it removes 36 heat from the reactor and then displaces 20 heat to itself. Now, this is basically like a backup thing. It'll take all the, uh, just a ton of heat out of the machine, except it'll run out of durability really quickly since it takes a lot of heat very quickly. Next, we have an interesting component and this is called the component heat vent. This is basically merging these two lines of items right here. And to make it just four iron bars, four tin plates, and then a normal heat vent. Now, what this does is it will displace four heat from itself to each surrounding component. And that's basically what all these things down here do as well. They'll move heat from itself to other components. So you can put coolant around it so that it's all being spread out instead of just like one coolant taking all the heat straight on. So this is where you can get custom, very customizable with your reactor. Now to make the basic heat exchanger, simply electronic circuit, five copper plates, three tin plates. The advanced one is four lapis lazuli plates, two normal heat exchangers, two electronic circuits, and a copper plate. To make the reactor heat exchanger, eight copper plates and one heat exchanger. And then to make the component heat exchanger is four gold plates and one heat exchanger. Now these, the first heat exchanger will exchange up to 12 heat with surrounding components and then up to four with reactor itself. The advanced one will do 24 and then eight with the reactor. The reactor heat exchanger will transfer up to 72 heat, but it will not move any of that heat to nearby components. And finally, the component heat exchanger will transfer 36 heat to each adjacent component, but it will not go to the reactor itself. Next, we have some coolant cells. Now these will not remove heat from the reactor, but instead just from any surrounding components and stuff like that. Now we got first the 10k coolant cell to make this simple, 4 tin plates, and a bunch of different types of coolant. You know, you can choose whatever you want. You can see there are a lot of forestry mod things popping up. It's one of the biggest mods that works with the IC2 mod. But this uh, upcoming cell right here, this is kind of the most basic one. Now to make this fluid right here, all you have to do is use one of those fluid solid canning machines, place 8 lapizuli dust in there, put it on this mode, and then boom it'll make the IC2 coolant. Very simple. Then for the 30K, all you do is take three of those with six tin plates, and the 60K, two 30s with six tin plates and an iron plate. Now we have a little bit stronger coolants. We have the RSH and we have the LZH. Now to make the RSH, it's seven redstone with a heat exchanger and a heat vent. And as you can see, you can place a redstone in and it'll recharge at 50%. Then you have the LZH and this is four redstone, one reactor heat exchanger, lapis lazuli block, reactor heat vent, and then two RSHs. And then as you can see, you can also refuel this, but it is much, much smaller for one redstone. As you can see, the durability of these things is quite different. So now since we have heat controlled, we're going to move on to some fuel here. Now there's two different types of fuel. You've got basic uranium fuel rods and you've got MOX fuel rods. Now the only difference is that MOX works better with more heat. So if the reactor heats up more, it will be more efficient in making energy. Now the problem with that is, of course, the hotter the reactor gets, the more dangers there are. But there are things to contain those dangers. And so you basically have to have a little bit more beefier of a reactor for this to work. Now to make these rods very simple, just find some uranium ore. You're going to crush it. And then you're going to place this crushed thing in a thermal centrifuge and you'll see you'll get a tiny pile of uranium-235 and then uranium-238. You're going to take both of those and that's how you make an enriched uranium nuclear fuel. As you can see, you take six of those and then three of the tiny piles. And then all you have to do is place this in a canning machine like this and boom, you got your fuel rod. Very simple. Now, if you want to make the MOX fuel to make this other type of fuel rod, all you have to do is take these depleted fuel rods. So once you finish one of these, you know, single stack, you can then take that and place it in a thermal centrifuge. And what you can do then is simply get some plutonium, very small amount, but after 
after a while they'll build up enough for you to be able to make this MOX nuclear fuel. And to make the big plutonium, very simple, just place nine of those in a crafting table. So that's pretty much it on how to make fuel. Next we got some other components and starting off with the nuclear reactor itself. Now you need four dense lead plates, three reactor chambers, an advanced circuit, and a generator. Now how do you make a reactor chamber? Very simple, four lead plates and a basic machine casing. Then we have a reactor access hatch, and this will take eight reactor pressure vessels and one wooden trap door. We have a fluid port, which is eight more of those pressure vessels and a universal empty fluid cell. A reactor redstone port, which is another eight of those with a redstone. We have reactor coolant injector, which is four ejector upgrades, three RSH condensers, an advanced machine casing, and a compact item buffer. Then we've got a reactor coolant injector, which is the same thing, except you're going to replace those RSHs with the LZHs. Then you have the reactor pressure vessel, and this is what it was in all those other crafting recipes. To make it, you need four of any type of raw, could polish not, and then five lead plates. Then we've got some different reactor platings. Now these, if you place on the inside of the reactor, and I'll show you that GUI in just a second, they will contain any effects, especially if the reactor explodes because it overheats. So if you place a bunch of these heat capacity reactor platings and containment reactor platings in there, then if you know something messed up and it explodes, it will not destroy your whole world. Instead, it will just simply make a small explosion as if a small machine went off. Now, to make the basic one, it's just advanced alloy with lead plate. To make the containment reactor plating, it's two advanced alloys with the reactor plating. And to make the heat capacity reactor plating, you take eight copper plates and one reactor plating. And that's pretty much it for all these basic components. So now, let's move on to the fun part. So right here, we have literally the most basic reactor you can make. You've got one fuel rod and one heat vent. Now, when I turn this on, you'll see that it will start outputting some energy, and you'll also notice that the durability of the heat as time goes on will start to go down. Now, there's barely any heat being produced. You can see the fuel's going down, so this will last forever, but unfortunately, this amount of energy is just simply pathetic. Right here, this core temperature, this was that reactor temperature that I was talking about, and this will slowly fill up if this wasn't here. So if I go ahead and take this out, you can see it starts to fill up like that. Now, if I place this back in here, it will stop filling up because now heat's being moved somewhere else. But, as you can see, it's not taking this down. That's why those certain reactor vents are important, because this core temperature does not go down without those. But this is just a very basic reactor. All I have to do is flick that, and it turns off. Very, very simple. Now, what you can do is you place reactor chambers, and that's this device right here, which you actually use to make this reactor. You can place those around the reactor itself, and they will open up those spaces. As you can see, since I have two of those, I now have two more spaces that have opened up. Now you can see you got a little bit more fuel rods, and if I go ahead and turn this on, this is where things can get a little bit more complex. You know, you're looking at this and you're like, you got two fuel rods, so why don't you just have 10 EU per tick? Well, that's because fuel rods kind of play off of each other. Certain fuel rods together will kind of multiply and it'll get more and more energy, but at the same time it'll produce more heat. So you can have it be more efficient if they're together. As you can see, if I go ahead and separate these, it goes down to 10 as you'd expect. But if they're together, they can play off each other and things kind of bounce back and forth between them and it just produces more energy. But at the same time, you can see these heat vents are going down much more quickly. If I were to go ahead and take these out, you can now see the core temperature rising much faster than it did in the other thing. So right here, this is kind of the most advanced reactor you can make. Now this is outside of any protective shell. This is just what it would look like. Because you only have six sides of the main nuclear reactor for you to place reactor chambers out of. And there are only that many slots. As you can see, you can't place anything over here. So this completely opens up your reactor, as you can see right here. I decided to throw everything in. Let's just get a ton of electricity from this guy right here. You can see it's output a lot of EU per tick, but at the same time you can see these vents are going down extremely quickly. But something about the advanced heat vents is that they will also recharge, as you can see right there. So they're also very useful, you know, you just give a little break and then they'll all come back up. But with the amount of energy going on in here, you can see it's pretty crazy. Now I'm going to go ahead and take these out because I want to show how things can really amplify because right now I don't have any of these dual rods next to each other except just up and down. If I were to place them all together, it would get pretty crazy. So, why not do that? Let's go ahead and turn this on. Whoa. Who'd have thunk I did something wrong? Huh. So, and I was thinking about this right when I was about to turn the switch on, which thankfully I stopped in time, is that these only work with adjacent stuff, so when I place them all right here, it's only stopping all this. As you can see, that's why the core temperature jumped up. Now I'm just using some reactor vents to drain that heat out. So you have to set it up like this, and then it'll stop the surrounding components. So, you know, there's a certain amount of, you know, efficiency you can get out of it. You kind of have to mess around with it. That's where things can get really customizable. So there we go. 
let's get a setup like that so you can see now we have one surrounding all these. But the main difference is that we have a lot of these dual fuel rods touching compared to the previous setup. So if I go ahead and turn this on, you can see it's producing a much higher ETU. But at the same time, I don't have the sufficient cooling because it only works in a four-way like this. So all these right here aren't even getting coolant on them. So you can see it's very tricky to set up and you need to make sure everything works orthogonally so that things are all cooled down so your reactor uh, doesn't explode like I've had happen before. So you can see some smoke and fire coming off this reactor, and that is because, well, it's got a really high core temperature. Now, if you have even a core temperature of 40%, things can really start to happen. But when you build up, you know, more fire can happen, water can evaporate, uh, entities will start catching on fire, blocks of lava will start spawning, so be very careful with that. And then if you hit 100%, well, there's no environment because there's a big hole in the ground. So, yeah. And, uh, well... Why don't we have this explode, I guess? Because it's a pretty big explosion. Boom! Yeah, I don't think you want that to be your house. Just saying. I've also experimented with other things over here, so we got several explosions over here as well. So, uh, yeah. It is not a small explosion compared to, like, normal machines that just get rid of, like, two blocks. So... Be very careful with this. So join me on a new flat world just to go over the last two parts of these reactors. One of which being, I want to show what this reactor plating does. So you saw the previous explosion, how it was pretty big. Now we have even more fuel in this than the previous explosion, but we're going to place some containment reactor plating surrounding these quad cores. If I go ahead and turn this on, it'll explode very quickly, but watch how much smaller the explosion is compared to the previous one. See? Nothing happens. That's what is amazing about that reactor completing. Nothing will happen at all. Now, that's because the whole thing was outlined. Of course, if you had a gap or something, then more explosions would come out, the fewer of that stuff you have. And also, of course, you have to give up more space for the safety. So, you know, you got that. But then you also have these reactor pressure vessels. Now, how you do this is you place a 5x5 five five cube of this surrounding the reactor. Okay, there we go. Now doing this does two things. One, it not only protects the reactor or any room that the reactor's in, but if you place a reactor axis hatch, you can place it anywhere, it turns the nuclear reactor into a fluid reactor. Now I'll place a picture up of how you make a fluid reactor. It's just another type of thing to produce energy. It's very simple. You just use, you know, the uranium rods and all that stuff, as you can see, I can place them in here like that. Except you have some coolant and stuff you have to worry about in liquid form. So it's a very simple setup, and in my opinion, I don't really like using it, but I mean, there's some people out there. If you want me to go into more detail in it, I can do that. Well, hello there. Now, although it is past Christmas and it's turning into winter wonderland, ignore that. You can see this thing right here. This is a previous explosion, not nearly as big as the one that happened in the other world. And this is what would happen if you had, you know, a hole in that reactor plating or something else. So it's a much smaller explosion still. It comes out in kind of a cool pattern, but it's still uh, pretty big. That's kind of what she said. That's pretty much it for the Initial Craft 2 nuclear reactor. Now, I know it's a very basic review, but it's just really customizable. You can have it be more safe, more dangerous, produce more energy. It's just based on what you want to do. But that's pretty much it for now. So if you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. Also, comment down below any questions you have with the mod, any components. If you want me to go through things in more detail, like the fluid reactor, all that type of stuff. But for right now, I'll see you all in the next video. High five.